The most unfortunate thing about this entire final chapter of Attack on Titan is the fact that Historia literally was written out of the story and had really no importance after the time skip of Attack on Titan because even though she had such a high amount of build up as a character put into a position of power, she literally barely had any panel time, she barely had any significance whatsoever, and she literally had a random farmer boy that apparently bullied her that managed to get with her and have a child. That's literally all we got from Historia after the time skip. It's just, it's very unfortunate how one of the best female characters of Attack on Titan ended up being basically just completely written out of the story. But anyways, Attack on Titan, chapter 139, the finale. So, it, there's been some time since Attack on Titan's final chapter came out. I've had a lot of time to really brood, think about how I feel about the conclusion. Do I like it? Do I hate it? And judging by how this video just started, you probably assume I hate the final chapter. You wouldn't be entirely wrong, however, I do actually like this chapter in other ways as well. And I want to kind of get into both sides, talk about what I like, what I dislike, and if it's actually a good finale of Attack on Titan, and is it worthy to actually say that this is a good series, or did the ending just entirely destroy everything Attack on Titan did. So, I want to get into the nitty gritty, and I wanted to dedicate this video to Attack on Titan because, honestly, it's the finale, and it deserves it. It's a series I've, I've covered for a very long time. I have literally dedicated a lot of time, a lot of videos talking about Attack on Titan over the years, and I really have a personal history with Attack on Titan. I mean, I remember when I really started gearing up and watching a, a lot of anime in the past was when Attack on Titan really started to come out back in 2011, I believe, and it's just hard to believe it's been over a decade since the series came out, and it's been a long journey, and regardless of how you feel about the conclusion of Attack on Titan, like if you absolutely hate it, or if you love of it, you have to at the very least admit it's been a long journey and we've had a lot of fun. If you have made it to this very point of Attack on Titan and you've read the final chapter of this series, then you most likely did enjoy your ride at least up until the end, even if you hate the final chapter. So it is worth noting the fact that it has been an enjoyable and fun journey and it's just, it is sad to see a series after so long come to a close, despite everything. And I, I gotta say, I will miss Attack on Titan. I truly will, because it's been something I've been looking forward to every single month for years now. And to know that it's now gone, it's just, it's, it's like a big hole. A hole that has been left behind that we're gonna probably, it's gonna take a long time to really, really be able to fill that back up again. So, anyways, the ending. Obviously by now, if you have been browsing like social media, you probably heard about the community's thoughts about Attack on Titan. There is a loud, a vocal majority, I think, that really do not like Attack on Titan's ending. And then you do have another big section as well that do like Attack on Titan's ending. And both sides are definitely very valid for their points, criticism, and the things they like and dislike about this sad conclusion, and that's really going to show how much people were invested in Attack on Titan, how long this series really had people engaged and really diving into things, dissecting the characters, the world, etc. It really goes to show you what Isayama, the writer of the series, did with this manga. He really created something special, and as with any ending, no ending is perfect. That is something that I think many need to realize. There is countless series I have read to its conclusion, watched to its conclusion, and there's many times, even though I love that ending, I can look at the ending and maybe name one thing maybe I did not like about it, something that could have probably done better. Nothing is perfect, and endings are the exact same, even more so. There is always going to be those individuals that are either going to love the ending, or they're going to hate the ending, and that, that's kind of what's happened here with this series. It's definitely a nice divide straight down the middle between both sides because of what this final chapter did. So, to get into some of the good, some of the things that I think actually was really good about this final chapter was the fact that I love the entire 
Levi scene. I think easily it is one of the best scenes of the chapter, but also I would dare say one of the best scenes of the entirety of the manga of Attack on Titan, because the sheer fact of seeing Levi laying up against a rock, you see him battle scarred, an old guard that's finally done with his duty, and he's all banged up, I and mean, when he looks at those individuals that have died before him, every individual character, even side support characters that we haven't seen since the very beginning of the series, you see them appear in this like hazy shadow like form and Levi gets to look at them and he's like you guys did it we devoted our hearts and you see all of them just using their pledge and all that the salute that they have done since the very beginning it's a very emotional scene and I literally started to choke up I was like holy crap this this is the end. This is the end of Attack on Titan and all these characters, everything they dedicated themselves for, all the, the lives that were lost to get to this very point, they finally got to that conclusion. Even if they might not have wanted this conclusion, they managed to get there thanks to all of their sacrifices. And it really makes you look at Erwin Smith's sacrifice, uh, sacrifice in his charge a little bit more differently now because that did allow them, Levi at the very least, to get to where they're at right now. It's emotional and I, like I said, it is the best best scene of the chapter, hands down, and even seeing that quick panel with the zoom in on Levi, where you don't see his eye, but you see that he starts to cry, I appreciate everything about that. You know, Isayama did a good job with Levi as a character, I loved how basically every plot point for him kind of got settled. I'm so, so happy with that. That was a good conclusion to his character. I really cannot say much more than that. It was just, it was good. Then we have the stuff with the whole tie-in with Aaron's actual goal being concluded. And <coughs> that's something I want to talk about that ties in with everybody's thoughts with the ending. So when we first started this series of Attack on Titan, if we look at kind of where the story started... It was always about Aaron wanting to kill all the Titans. That's literally where the series began over a decade ago. It literally started there. Aaron basically declared he would wipe out all the Titans thanks to what happened to his mother. We now know a lot more information, and I'll talk about that in a minute. But when we look at what the series set out to do with its objective, its in-game goal, at least with the beginning... Aaron did accomplish that. All the Titans are, in fact, gone from the world. They are no longer there. They don't exist anymore. So, technically, if you actually started reading this series for Aaron to wipe out all the Titans, you did, in fact, get that. The objective was definitely done. However, this is where problems start to come in and showcase when you shift your story from a like a simplistic end game and try to make something even more extravagant and you lose your sight of the original goal the ending might become a little bit more messier and what i'm trying to say here is is that at first the goal of attack on titan was Aaron to wipe out the titans and obviously when the world expanded we got more information the end game goal kind of shifted a little bit it was no longer really about wiping out all the titans it was about you know them f wiping out the individuals on the other side of the world and eventually the plot was basically about hey you know we uh we need to commit mass basic genocide to get rid of the other side and be able to end hatred and the cycle of, you know, hatred and all that. That's what we need to do. That's what Aaron wanted to do. And so the objective kind of shifted. And it did make sense in context of the story why that happened. But technically, the goal of the series did shift and change. And this is a huge problem many series actually make when their life cycle stays around for a very long time. Like, I want to take an example from Naruto. Regardless if you love or hate Naruto, I'm not going to step on anyone's toes. All I'm going to say is, is that when you look at the origin point of Naruto, it was about Naruto being Hokage. That, that's what it was about. And then eventually, we know the stuff with Sasuke. He, he runs off and he does his own thing. And it feels like the goal of Naruto kind of shifts over to, instead of Naruto wanting to be Hokage, it shifts over to him wanting to save Sasuke. And the whole objective of the series kind of gets muddled and it no longer really served the same purpose it once had. It felt like Hokage was more of a side objective than anything else and when eventually it devolved into the fact of like oh let's stop hatred the cycle of hatred etc that's kind of what Naruto became towards the end of it even though there is no way to really get rid of the cycle of hatred because that's just what humans are at the end of the day we're just going to keep fighting and go back at each other with vengeance and all that there 
there is no answer to that conflict unless one of the other wipes the other off the face of the world. That's literally what Attack on Titan basically said, and this was something everybody knew was the case since the very beginning. Before we even saw this final chapter, the only way to truly settle the cycle of hatred, truthfully, is by one side being completely obliterated. There, there really is no way. Forgiveness and all that petty differences don't just disappear. And in fact, because of that element, the shift of the story going into what it is about the cycle of hatred and getting rid of the other side, this is where I feel like Attack on Titan kind of stumbled a bit because it lost what it once was and it got into a plot point that there was no clear-cut answer for. I feel like if Isayama would have actually wiped out everyone instead of just 80% and wouldn't have left Eren's motive with, let's say, a glass half full or glass half empty, we would have had the whole element of maybe I would have agreed with the cycle of hatred being destroyed because it would fit with the line of what the story was trying to tell us because the only way to actually get rid of that is by wiping out the other side. Is it necessarily a good ending to basically say, oh, everybody's dead? No. No, but at the same time, it's realistic, and it really makes me upset with Aaron's motives to just stop at 80% when he should have just went all the way. I I'm serious. It it's just like... That's what bugged me about the ending, at least when it came to the goal shifting, because with just the 80%, all it does is it just delays the inevitable. That's, that's all it does. You're going to have it to where those that are on the mainland that are now having to rebuild for probably decades and generations, they're not going to forget what the Eldians and Aaron did. They're, they're not just going to go away. They're not going to forget all of that unless they're entirely wiped out, and that's literally what the final segments of the the chapter even says that until one side is obliterated there's probably never going to be peace and i'm just like okay so aaron literally died he legitimately died basically to put them back in the same spot they were at when the series began it's like what okay now i can go on a limb here and explain why this makes sense to a certain degree aaron wasn't really thinking about the world and thousands of years in the future he was just thinking about the current generation his friends and what they would have to deal with once he's actually gone this is kind of related in the fact that he's like you know after i'm gone i don't want none of you to have my titan power etc everything about aaron's character basically showed that he did everything for his friends he didn't care about anyone on paradise island technically he only cared about his friends he didn't care about anyone on the mainland he only cared about his friends so as long as if they had a good life after he was gone he didn't care what happened afterwards that's basically what you can kind of get from this conclusion but even then i'm just like aaron became like a monster everybody would hate for that fact and then he didn't really do anything to make the future lives of his friends his children and their children a better place because war is just going to start again and this time the Eldians are not going to have the Titan powers to be able to defend themselves so it's just like it's going to be in a much worse state than it already was so you can kind of get my point I feel like the ending it didn't really accomplish anything literally Aaron died just to put the situation back in the same boat that it was when it started now, that, that gets back into actually what Eren did throughout the series. So, this finale lets us know that Eren is in fact responsible for everything. Not just the rumbling and 80% of humanity being wiped out. He is literally responsible for every single death in the series. Every single death he is responsible for in this manga, and I can easily explain why. We have literally an entire page dedicated with him showing that, yes, his mind is incoherent, and that he saved Bert that, you know, wasn't supposed to die that day, and so he literally uh, sent Dina to go after his mother and, you know, start the whole chain of events that was Attack on Titan. So literally, Eren caused his own mother to get eaten, to traumatize his younger self, to eventually get the founding Titan to be where he's at right now. He literally created his own loop. He did everything. He caused everything. He messed with his father. He messed with the previous generations. He messed with, you know, probably Ymir for the past 2,000 years. The point is, Eren is responsible not just for the story we saw, but most likely countless characters from the past. 
That is messed up. The man literally is responsible for every individual character that happened, and it makes me feel even sadder for Levi as a character, knowing what I know now after everything that happened in Season 1 to his entire squad. It really hits hard to think about. So, basically, Aaron, he... All the problems, all this anger he, he did, or he had, he created himself. He caused it. And he had this power to potentially do things, but he didn't. He decided to be a slave to, you know, the founding titan. That, that's what he was. He, he was literally a slave to the founding titan and the attack titan. He didn't try to do anything to really change anything. He just legitimately gave up. And I'm just like... Really? Because you can see that there is some childish nature inside of him for even going out of his way to talk to every one of his friends, and on top of that, to just have a little mental breakdown and start talking about, oh, you know, I don't want Mikasa to have someone and all that, I want her just to have me, and I'm just like, oh my goodness, like, kind of cringe a little bit to that one, I'm gonna be honest with you, but the point though is, it's just like, everything about it, it's just like, Aaron, if you're that immature to act like that after everything you've done, you could have fought a little bit harder, but he literally gave up. Basically, what this lets us know is Aaron gave up since the very beginning. He didn't care. He didn't care to fight back against fate. He wants freedom, but he was never free. And I guess that's ironic. It does go with the storytelling. It's poetic, but it doesn't change the fact, though. Aaron literally, one of the best shonen protagonists I've seen in a long time, basically turned into a bird. And a, a plot point that just, like, uh, he didn't finish his job. He kind of did, like I said, a ha glass half full, half empty. So I just, I really think Attack on Titans conclusion was a little bit of a blunder. I, I really do. There's a lot of things about it I just don't think were good. And that doesn't even get into the fact of the whole bird scene. Now, I, I really have been trying to wrap my head around that entire final page of the series of Attack on Titan and try to really think about what is happening there. Because, like, we have the situation where Aaron was in the past dimension and he died. Is this letting us know that Aaron technically is still locked away in the past dimension and now he decided to reincarnate himself as, like, a bird to be able to communicate with those around him? So, for instance, every time we've seen a bird in the series, that's actually Aaron after his death. Is that what's happening there? And if so, that is interesting, but it's like, of all things, he reincarnates as a bird. I guess it might reference maybe the all-seeing eye of Odin the Raven. Maybe that's the reference since, you know... Attack on Titan does like to reference Norse mythology. There probably is some connection there maybe to Odin. But even if that may be the case, it's just like, of all things that Eren could potentially be reincarnated as, it, I feel like in story-wise, it would have been better for Eren to be reincarnated as maybe his story as baby, or at least pass on maybe some of his memories or whatever. I felt like that would have been an interesting conclusion. It would have explained why his story was just out of the picture for so long, caring for basically the new Eren. Something like that would have been interesting, but that in fact did not happen, and it goes back to my earlier point, Historia, literally a useless character after time skip, had no relevance whatsoever, which is sad, one of the strongest female characters with the greatest story writing ended up like she did. But yeah, just Attack on Titan, it's uh... <sighs> The ending isn't good. It, it's, it's not good. I mean, maybe after I sit maybe a year or two on it, I might look back at this and think it's good. But at the very least at this time, the ending, all it does is it feels... It feels rushed. It feels rushed. It feels like there needed to be a whole other chapter, maybe four chapters or so of the series to really settle everything in and get a conclusion we wanted. Because I think there's something that many are not really thinking about, and that's the fact that the giant worm! The giant worm just disappeared like it literally was in the last chapter and it just it disappeared like even if it's host Ymir and Aaron died that creature was a freaking alien that was like in a tree for we don't know how long and it just disappears like what like uh, okay I know it was literally used as a MacGuffin to just say this is how Titan powers came about this magic but it's like you don't just introduce an element like that especially with some of the best writing in the series and not at least give a little bit of details or at least see the creature fully die it's just like we didn't even get that so that one that one if there is anything that bugs me about this it is that that really stings that stings so much to me with how the worm didn't get explained it just disappeared like where to go Literally, where did it go? We didn't really see what happened to it. But yeah, so anyways, all I'm going to say is 
do or do I still like Attack on Titan? Yes, I I still say I enjoyed my journey of Attack on Titan. Do I still hold Attack on Titan as probably in my top ten after this conclusion? <sighs> Here's the thing. I really, really, really factor conclusions heavily into my overall feelings of a series. Because an ending is supposed to be that bow on top. It's supposed to really wrap things up. Even if it isn't perfect, it's supposed to wrap things up in a way to where you feel satisfied with what you read or watched. And do I feel satisfied? Yes and no. I'm satisfied with some elements with Levi... But then the whole Aaron situation with Mikasa, Historia, and all the others, and Reiner, and everything, it's just like, ugh, I don't feel satisfied there. So, I would say, I don't know, I don't I don't think this is in my, my top 10 anymore, I really don't. Like I said, it might take a few years to really think about it, it might be added back again, but... At this time, I just, I feel like Attack on Titan needed more chapters. It needed, it needed more to really give us more details on the ending. And hopefully the anime, the final season, when it finally has its final half aired, kind of corrects some of these mistakes we saw at the ending. It makes me wonder what was really happening with Isayama. I doubt he was rushed, so I do wonder what happened. But, uh, yeah, I'm gonna leave it at that. That's my overall thoughts on Attack on Titan. I know that there's probably gonna be a lot of heated people about my opinion on Attack on Titan not liking what I just said, but I wanted to be honest about how I felt, and here it is. I mean, I just, I wanted to say how I truly feel about the series. I know there's gonna be so many people that disagree with me. So many people are gonna just be like, ugh, like, I don't like what you just said, but... I just, I wanted to be honest. So, uh, if I am wrong at any points, though, do correct me in the comments below. I would like to see it. If you have any of your thoughts about the series and how the conclusion was, I would love to see what you guys think. But with that, guys, it's been a journey. You have a wonderful day or not wherever you live. If you enjoy my content, you know, please subscribe. If you like this video, please leave a like. And with that, Chibi out.